Today we're talking about renting versus buying a home. Which one's better? Okay, which one do you think is better? Buying a home. Why? I want to make a move. Because when you're buying a home, you're at least building your equity. It's an investment. Renting, you're just throwing your money away every month. But what's the benefit of renting? You can call your landlord for whatever you want. If the toilet gets clogged, you can call your landlord. If the air conditioning is broken, you can call your landlord. So it's a fixed payment every month. But the home ownership, you have surprises. We had to replace our roof this past year, and that's ten thousand dollars. I'm just saying, not everybody's going to have ten thousand dollars laying around. Home ownerships are like women, full of surprises. Oh no! <laughs> and renting is like. Man, we just, I mean, we can live off on pizza and beer for the rest of our lives. A steak from time to time. <laughs> True, men are simple. She said it. She said it, okay? Internet, there we go. In the past few years, we all know home prices have gone out of control and the interest rate is 7%. So pretty much if you don't have a home and if you want to own a home right now, it's pretty much impossible for you. Obviously, you married an Asian, assuming this Asian knows his math. So I did some intense Asian math magic and the results are very surprising. Renting, if it's done right, it's actually better than buying a home. What would you think if I tell you that? I'd say no way. You still think buying a home is better? Yeah. So in this video, I'm going to try to convince my wife if you do this right, renting is actually can be better than buying a home if you do it right. And disclaimers up front. Most of us, I don't even think I can. I would say 98% of the Americans are not going to do this right. I'm just showing you what the math says. I really don't think a lot of people will actually do this. Just showing you the math. First of all, we're going to use the national average number. So I know some numbers can be different. So if you're from New York or Alabama, the numbers are going to be different. So this is the national average number. If you want me to run a different scenario for you, comment down below what number you want me to input and I'll tell what the results are. So here we go. Scenario number one, you pay $1,500 a month to rent apartment. And usually some apartments, most of the class A apartments will require you to have a renter's insurance. And that usually is about 2% of the rent. So let's say if you pay $1,500 a month for rent, you're going to pay $30 a month in renter's insurance. So your monthly cost will be $1,530. Right. And your yearly cost will be $18,360. And let's say you're going to rent it for two years. After year one, your rent's gonna go up. How much is it going up? US national average, 4.7%, which is the same appreciation as the US home appreciation. I'll get to that in a minute. We're going to use 4.7% as the inflation for this entire thing. So year two, the rent's gonna go up 4.7%. So your monthly rent is 1571 now, and your renter's insurance goes up as well. The same rate, the rent is going up. So second year, you're going to spend $377 a year on your renter's insurance, which is $19,223 for the entire year two, versus the first year, $18,360. But after renting for two years, your accumulated cost, your total cost is $37,583. That's a lot of money. And let's say you rent it for three years. Your accumulated cost, your total cost for renting for three years is $57,709. You would think this is a lot of money, right? Just wait. Let me tell you the cost of owning a home. Most of the people, after they move out of their apartment, they're going to buy a home. First time home buyers, they're going to spend around $400,000 to buy a home and they put around 10% down to buy their first home. By the way, if you want to know how much down payment you should put down for a house, Click here and check out this video. A lot of nerdy math over there. Look, if you're not following, it's okay. I'm a nerd. Slow down and watch it again. I'm going to try to explain it as slow as I can so we can all understand. Sometimes I get lost too. So for a $400,000 home, you're buying it with 10% down at 7% interest rate. I know this interest rate may change in the future. So if you want me to put in a different number, let me know. So first of all, on top of the mortgage, you have to pay back to the bank. Do you think you have some other expenses associated with only a home as well. No, you have property tax, you have insurance, and the cost to keep up the house. Cost to keep up the it's house. It's all on you. You don't have the landlord. Now you don't hate your landlord that much now, huh? As an apartment owner, we had to put up a lot of crap. Just saying. So yes, cost to keep up the home. And that usually costs about 1% of your home value. So if it's a $400,000 home, it's $4,000 a year. It may seem like a lot, 
but trust me, the national average is actually between one and 2%. But let's just say you're kind of handy, you're going to do a DIY. You're not going to pay a plumber or electrician to do the job. So let's, let's just use 1%. Every 30 years, you're going to need a new roof. Every 20 years, you need a new air conditioning unit. Every 15 years, you need a new water heater. Every 10 years, your fridge is gonna run out. And you probably wanna update that bathroom or kitchen or rip out that carpet and put it on a hardwood floor because you're going to upgrade the house. Things are going to break, especially everything's made in China, China now. So it's going to break. <laughs> Again, we're using national average number. So if you're from New York or you're from Mississippi, I'm sorry, numbers are gonna be different. Again, comment down below with your numbers you want me to put in and I'll run the scenario for you. You see what I did there, YouTube? So on top of $28,741 you're going to pay, you're going to pay $2,000 a year in home insurance, $4,000 a year towards property tax, and $4,000 a year capital expense. So an entire year for owning a house and living in a house, it's going to cost you $38,741. Isn't that about as much as the down payment you put down? Yes, on top of the $40,000 I have to put down as a down payment. Versus $18,360 a year renting an apartment at $1,500 a month. Look, some people may compare $2,000 a month in rent. We're talking about starter home versus normal class B apartments. We're not talking about luxury apartments versus mansions or ghetto homes. And if you own a home for two years, your mortgage payment is not going up, but your property tax amount, your insurance amount, and guess what? Your capital expense amount are going up 4.7% national average. Owning a home for two years, accounting for 4.7% inflation or home appreciation, whatever you call it, the accumulated expense for two years is $77,952 for living in a home for two years. That sounds a lot more expensive. I know very expensive. An accumulated cost for three years ownership is $117,655. A lot of money. <laughs> yeah, that doesn't sound better. That sounds like you're much worse off. With all these costs, aren't you paying down your mortgage and building up your equity? Yes, you're right. You are paying down your mortgage and your home has appreciated as well. After only home for a year, after paying $28,741 into your mortgage, you actually pay down $4,063 worth of principal amount. That's whenever you sell the house, you're going to recapture this. You're paying down your loan and your home has appreciated 4.7% national average, which is $18,800. Mm -hmm. But if you want to get this money, you have to sell your house to get this money. Whatever you pay down your mortgage, however much your home has appreciated, it's unrealized things. You can't really touch that money unless you sell a house. Whenever you sell your house, you have to pay 6% to the brokers. Let's just say you have a cousin, you have a friend, you have a family friend that's a realtor that's going to give you a discount. 5% in realtor's commission, which is 2.5% listing agent and 2.5% buyer's agent. And 1% for closing. Because in a normal market, it costs you money to sell your house. So let's just say 6% total to sell your house in order to capture this money. But wouldn't that take away from your profit? Exactly. After owning your house for one year, you have $4,063 in principle principal and $18,800 in appreciation, but it's going to cost you $24,000 to sell your house in order to get this money. So eventually you're still losing $1,137. So you're not really making a profit at all? No. And what's worse is you're not getting your insurance money back, you're not getting your property tax money back. In most cases, you're not getting your capital expense back after paying $28,741 into mortgage. So you really, your accumulated cost is $39,878 if you sell your house after owning it for one year. That doesn't sound bad. No. It costs you $40,000 a year to live in the house. You do get your $40,000 down payment money back though. But I mean, that money is yours anyway. So really, I don't consider that as a gain. If you sell your house after two years, you have paid down more principal and the home has appreciated more after you spend more money. And it costs you more money to sell your house because your home has appreciated more. So 6% of your current home value. So after owning your house for two years and you sell your house after two years, you have an accumulated loss of $56,176. You want to know numbers for three years? I'm guessing it's even higher. $71,780. This is the cost of home ownership. In exchange, you fix your mortgage payment, so you have the same mortgage payment 
every year. Unlike rent, rent goes up every year. Mortgage payment doesn't go up. And you have a place you get to call home. You can paint the walls whatever color you want. But in an apartment, you can technically do it. You just lose your security deposit. Just saying. But either way, both renting and buying a house lose money. But why did I say renting is better? First of all, if you choose not to buy a home, that $40,000 down payment money, you can actually invest the money. Let's just say S&P 500, 9% historic average, which after a year, you're going to have $43,600. And that's not that money. If you need that money, you don't have to borrow that money out. You don't have to sell your house to get that money out. It's not that money. Escrow contribution. You don't have to pay property tax. You don't have to pay insurance. You don't have to keep up with the house. No capital expense. So that saves you $10,000 a year. $4,000 property tax, $2,000 insurance, and $4,000 capital expense. And that's $10,000. You get to put that and save that and invest that. Look, most of the people are not going to invest it. Most of the people are going to take a trip to Hawaii and go to the bar on Friday night and get a $9 drink. And they're going to get a second drink after the first drink. I'm just saying most of the people are not going to invest this money. Again, I'm just showing you the math. If you had invested this money, this is what it's going to look like. Mortgage difference. You pay $28,741 in mortgage, but you only spend $18,360 in rent and renter's insurance. So in that case, you are saving $10,381 in mortgage payments difference. And guess what? You invest that money. But in my math, I'm not going to give any returns to the escrow contribution and mortgage difference contribution in the first year because you're saving that money monthly. You're not going to save that money from day one. So we're going to give it a 9% return after year one in year two. So by renting for the first year, you get to save your $40,000 down payment money, not that money, $10,000 in escrow contribution, $10,381 in mortgage difference, and a 9% return you made from the down payment money, which is $3,600. You're going to have accumulated the cash value of $63,981. That sounds a lot better. I mean, the $40,000 is a down payment money, but technically it's about like 20 something thousand dollars. But still, that's better than owning a home. I'm just showing you the math. But it did cost you $18,360 to rent an apartment and that 40k down payment money technically we cannot count that so adjusting all the math by investing that money you have a net gain of five thousand six hundred and twenty one dollars you're making money you're making over five thousand dollars a year by renting versus buying can you believe that i would have never guessed that. exactly most of people wouldn't think this way you may argue, but hear me out. Insurance amount you pay on 100 houses versus the insurance for a landlord to pay on 100 doors of apartments. The apartments is always gonna be cheaper than the houses. Property tax, same story. For you to hire someone to repair your uh, air conditioning unit, you're going to pay a contractor, let's say $500 to repair it. But for the landlord to repair one air conditioning unit for that apartment building, because of the volume, he gets a volume discount. I pay $22 per hour for my technician to repair my apartment building to fix an air conditioning unit. It's a lot cheaper to build 100 doors of apartments versus 100 houses. That's just the facts. You get what you pay for. If you rent it for two years, yes, it's going to cost you $37,583 cumulated cost to rent that apartment. But guess what? Now down payment money has a compounded return. It turned into $47,524 after two years. 9% return on average. You're still following me, right? Okay. Just want to make sure I didn't lose you guys. And for the second year, you don't have to pay your property insurance, property tax, and capital expense. Plus, you're going to make 9% return from the first year's contribution. So after two years, in your escrow contribution, you're going to have a cash value of $21,370. Mortgage difference contribution. After two years, you're going to have a cash value of $20,937, including the $40,000 down payment money you have. Now you have an entire stash of $89,831, minus the rental cost. You have a net gain of $12,248. You still there? Yeah. So you're actually gaining money, whereas owning a home with all the expenses, you're losing money. Exactly. You get to invest the expenses that you usually need to spend on owning a home. If you invest that expense and down payment money, you're actually making money renting an apartment instead of owning a home. I'm just saying, most of the people do not invest this money. Most of the people, they spend this money. Look, if I were a renter, I would do the same. You want to go to Hawaii? <laughs> See that? All right, three year comparison. After renting for three years, you have a stash of $116,721 
cash value saved up from your down payment investment, escrow contribution investment, and the mortgage difference investment. Taking off the expense for renting a place for three years, you have a net gain of $19,012 versus owning a home you're losing $71,780. Losing $71,000? Yes, you're losing $71,000 some change. The other way you're making money, but you really have the discipline to invest this money. Now, homeowners may be arguing, the mortgage payments are amortized. You pay down more of your principal and you pay less and less interest as the time goes. Now, let's look at year five, year 10, year 20 and year 30. For renting for five years, you have a net gain of $32,894. For owning a home, you have net loss of $100,737. And here are the numbers for year 20 and year 30. I'm gonna put all these numbers on the screen, so just in case you wanna look at year 17 and a half or year 25 or year 69, here are the numbers. Interesting enough, in this model, it does break even after 31 years. But who's going to live in the same house for that long? Nobody lives in the same house for 30 years. You're going to upsize and then downsize. You're going to hate those stairs. So you're going to move into a retirement community. Just saying. But in this model, it breaks even after 31 years. You're prison in your house for 31 years. In order just to break even. But again, are you really going to live somewhere for 30 years? And numbers can be different, okay? So if you want me to plug in a different number, like $1,800 a month rent or $320,000 home, put 5% down, 20% down, put that request down in the comment section and I'll run a model for you. So what do you think? I'm thinking that it's better to rent now, which I never thought I'd say that. For some people, yes, but for some people, owning a home is still the American dream. So it's different for everybody. And like I said, very few people will actually invest the down payment money and invest this money. So most of the time, honestly, more than 98% of the time, you end up making more money by buying a home than renting an apartment. Because if you have been following this channel, you know I've been saying this quite a few times. The average net worth for a homeowner is way, way, way much higher than the average net worth of a renter. There's a reason why. We Americans have a tendency of whenever you see you have that amount in your bank account, you're going to spend it. Whenever you have twenty, thirty thousand dollars in your checking account, you're going to Hawaii, you're going to Bahamas, you're going to Paris, you're going to a nice restaurant. But because you own a home, it forces you to pay that payments and it forces you to invest that money into your principal and your home gets you appreciated. Because you don't want to become homeless. Exactly. If you don't make that payment, it loses your home. So this is just what the math says. Again, I'm an Asian nerd. I'm just doing the math and showing you if you had done this, this would have been the result. If you had $30,000 in your bank account, where would you spend it on? Leave that in the comment section. Subscribe for more. You heard her.